When you think about iOS development, it's likely that Microsoft isn't the first thing that comes to mind. That was certainly the case for me when I started looking for software engineering internships while having mostly an iOS background. But after a year and a half doing app development in this company, I have an entirely different perspective. If you're new here, my name is Juan Carlos Fontecha, and on top of my day-to-day -day engineering work, I like to share online my journey navigating a career and lifestyle in tech. Today, I wanna to share with you what it's like to be an iOS engineer at Microsoft, its challenges and its perks, and towards the end, I'll show you how you can find mobile-specific openings if this is something you're interested in pursuing. The first kind of development I did as a kid was in the web realm. Despite that, the moment I decided to pursue software engineering as a career was when I saw the App Store being introduced back in 28. What we call the App Store. This is an application we've written to deliver apps to the iPhone. The idea of software that people were able to physically touch and have it live in their pocket was always a really powerful motivator for me. As any college student back in 2015 would have told you, I didn't really associate Microsoft with any kind of Apple development. I knew they had Office for Mac, but I thought it was just something they felt forced to develop. Back then, I had the overly simplistic belief that a company wouldn't just be building state-of-the-art apps for a competitor's platform. Just, who would do that? With my limited understanding of their business model, it just didn't make sense to me at the time. So much so that I even hesitated taking out my iPhone in public the first couple of days I stepped into a Microsoft office. Quick boy, hide this thing! I think it's fair to say that I thought I was pretty much giving up Apple development altogether if I decided to stay at Microsoft. But then I started learning more about Satya Nadella's Microsoft, and that was really cool. I learned that they were embracing a mobile and web-first philosophy to its software design. Instead of adopting mobile products as an extension of its full-fledged PC counterparts, they would embrace the mobile landscape as much as possible. An example of this being how, around that time, uh, they released the Office suite for free on iOS. There was a visible mindset shift from being device and platform-centric to one where users were empowered through services, regardless of which device or platform they were using at any given time. And while Microsoft has lately adopted Android as the mobile companion of Windows and the operating system of their Surface Duo phone, there is still a lot of iOS development going on within the company. When I came back as a full-time employee in 2019, I started working on a web application. But being a full-time employee now meant that I was exposed to other internal roles that I could pursue. And my organization had a really cool program that allowed people to switch teams if that meant working on something they were more passionate about. So I went ahead and took them up for it, and I switched to the mobile team within my org to work on iOS video playback experiences, being an Apple developer at Microsoft. You might already see where I'm headed with this story. Working on products for Apple platforms doesn't shift your day-to-day -day work too much nowadays. There's really not a significant debate around Mac versus PC, and there really is no stigma about owning Apple devices, as I had thought when I first stepped into their offices back in my intern days. With that said, let's take a look at some of the things that do change when you work on Apple platforms. You get a Mac. Probably no surprises here if you're familiar with iOS development already. If you're not, one important thing you quickly learn is the fact that you need a Mac to be able to develop iOS apps. What kind of Mac you get depends on your specific team and their needs, but I do my everyday work in a 16-inch MacBook Pro and sometimes a Mac Mini. This can be either positive or negative depending on your own preference of operating system, but at least in my experience, nobody has made a big deal out of this. And having a Mac usually does not exclude you from also having a PC assigned to you, but more on that in a second. Apple developers community. Microsoft being as big a company as it is, has a very vibrant community of engineers working on Apple platforms. This is one of the coolest surprises I encountered when I first moved into an iOS related team. With the company owning some of the longest living Mac apps and now also 
having products like LinkedIn, GitHub, and Flipgrid as part of the family, there's a lot of expertise about iOS development, and there's a lot to learn from engineers here. So much, in fact, that once a year, the community organizes a series of talks and panels over the course of two or three days, where teams and individuals share their breakthroughs, stories, and struggles around Apple development with other teams and raise the quality of the software they build by adopting more consistent and unified practices and tools. The community has grown so much that uh, they've started publishing some of their learnings publicly on a Medium blog about Microsoft mobile engineering, and I thought that was pretty cool. Some of the challenges. One downside that I've experienced is the fact that sometimes for internal processes, you need to deal with tools built exclusively for Windows. A lot of systems nowadays are web-based, but every so often you'll come across a Windows specific tool that you'll need to use and you'll end up needing to deal with a couple of extra steps to get it done if you only have a Mac. But it's for this reason, like I mentioned before, that oftentimes, even if you use a Mac for everyday development, you also have a PC assigned to you. The simplest way to find open roles within Microsoft is to head over to careers.microsoft.com and search for terms like mobile and iOS. The only problem is that a lot of openings mention these words in their description, even if the role is not specifically for iOS or mobile development. So a pro tip I can give you is to use hashtags in your search. A lot of teams use them in the description and it's one way to filter out the roles that just marginally mention something around mobile. To wrap up, being an iOS developer at Microsoft isn't very different from being an iOS developer at any other big company. And it's also not very different from working on other platforms within the company. In my experience, under Satya's leadership, working on competing platforms and services is not frowned upon. After all, the company is making a strategic investment. So in a nutshell, my experience has been pretty positive. There are a lot of opportunities for iOS related work inside of Microsoft and there's a vibrant community around it. If you're curious about iOS development in general, I also started working on some videos about my experience with it. So feel free to ask me any questions down below and I'll do my best to include them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.